Hello, welcome to Zygma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from Exam Guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post UTME, YEG, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Kabupedia, BECE. JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. If you have an empty bottle, for example, you have this empty bottle. If you open it and press it, apply pressure on it, you see what happens. Now, let's assume that it is well cooked, like this. Then, you see, what do you notice? You will not, I couldn't be able to squeeze it or press it harder as I, I could, I did when there was no um, cover. And this experiment or natural happen, happenings is going to lead us to a topic titled pressure. Part two. Now, in this pressure part two, we are going to be looking at definition and explanation of atmospheric pressure. We are going to explain the principle of simple bar barometer. We are going to explain the principle of manometer, then apply the principle of manometer in problem solving. Then we are also going to explain the working principle of a siphon, syringe, and pump. And then lastly, we look at hairs apparatus. Now, like I was saying, the, um, the picture you have on the screen talks about the pressure of the atmosphere, which um, the pressure of the atmosphere which enters through this part, and then the gas supply. However, when we talk about atmospheric pressure or pressure as a whole, remember this is a follow-up of the previous class that we treated on pressure. We talked about the liquid pressure and solid pressure. But now we are looking at the atmospheric pressure. And the major thing I want you to understand is that anywhere you are, there is atmosphere. If you use any paper and find yourself, you could feel the, 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 the air, the breeze around you. That means that a space is filled with air, or what I call atmosphere. Now, this atmospheric pressure is being applied on anything around on this bottle water. If the, the pressure inside this bottle could not balance the pressure outside the bottle, what happened is that the air, the atmospheric pressure bombarding this bottle would have squeezed it like this. You see the way I squeeze it? That is what it would have done. However, if I cock it very well, like I did initially, cock it airtight so that air will not pass through, then it's hard for me to squeeze it. Why? Because the pressure inside is balancing the pressure that I am applying on this bottle. Now, this atmospheric pressure is everywhere. Remember they said that nature abhors vacuum. Whenever there is a space, there is a stream of air that will fill that vacuum, and that stream of air is mounting pressure on anybody. Now, even as a human being, you remember we talk about what we have called like um, blood pressure. We talk about every other thing. If the pressure in your body, in your stomach, does not balance this pressure outside, then the air bombarding you would have squeezed you. And that is why we talk about crushing can experiment. You can try to find what I mean by crushing can experiment. If a can it has no air inside, maybe driving air, drive out air, with the use of heating, and you put it inside water, there will be a pressure outside squeezing it, because the pressure outside could not balance the pressure inside. Now, all these are what we are going to look at when we go through in this atmospheric pressure. All right. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is the one we call simple barometer. 
This simple barometer is, is just an experiment which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure because atmospheric pressure may not be constant. Um, it changes because, you know, the weather, the climate, and one thing or the other could cause the atmospheric pressure to change. Now, there is a way we measure atmospheric pressure, and there is an ideal atmospheric pressure, which is given as 76 cm mercury, or the one they call 760 millimeter mercury. Now, this instrument you are seeing on the screen is called simple barometer. If you look at this um, container, open container with the blue color inside, is given as the mercury. Now, what happens is that atmospheric pressure is bombarding on, the, on that liquid, the, the mercury. Then, as they are pushing in from this part, this B, it goes up, the, the mercury goes up, then to a particular height. If you measure between A to B, you will have a value given as 76 centimeter of this mercury. To show you that at that particular point, the mercury is 76 centimeter or 760 millimeter. And this vacuum we have here is just a vacuum which is called Torricelli vacuum, which is a vacuum because this mercury could not go in there. But if for any reason air is filled on that part, then we now know that the barometer is 40. So what I am saying in essence is that this is a simple barometer and this is um, a way of measuring atmospheric pressure because a barometer is an instrument. Simple barometer is an instrument used for measuring atmospheric pressure. And the setup is given as this. And the standard atmospheric pressure is given as 760 millimeter of mercury. And it is written 760 millimeter of mercury. Or sometimes you have 76 centimeter of mercury. So that is for that. Let's move on. Now, we have another instrument because we, we are talking about atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is a natural happening, is a natural thing. But when we talk about gas pressure, we are talking about a pressure mounted by a gas. The gas, remember, if you look, do chemistry very well, you look at, we have gases, um, especially the ones on the group eight um, of periodic table. Then, the gas pressure, mostly the one we use in, in, in laboratory, is this instrument you are seeing on the screen, and it is called manometer. Manometer is an instrument used for measuring gas pressure. Now, inside this container you are seeing here, or this vessel, inside it is the gas. It, the gas at that point could be helium or hydrogen. And that is the, the two kinds of gases uh, used in preparing or constructing gas thermometer. We will get there shortly. However, this manometer is the instrument. Let me draw it on the board and let's look at some explanation that is applied to it. If this is the vessel, right, and it is connected to a U-tube, that is a tube in a U-shaped form. So we put it like this. Let's not, let this not be boring. All right. Now, this place is filled with gas, as you are seeing there on the screen. Then what happens? This is open to the atmosphere. It is open. And anytime something opens, what happens? If I open this can, what happens? Air, atmosphere will go in to occupy because nature abhors vacuum. So anywhere that is opening, air will go and occupy, that is atmospheric pressure or gas, whatever. Because even in the atmosphere, there are vapor, there are other gases, you know. Now, this is the channel or opening where atmospheric pressure will go in. Now, inside this YouTube is a mercury, 
you know. So a mercury is filled here. Let me use uh, the red color to represent the mercury in the U2. So this is the mercury. The mercury, I'm using this um, red marker to represent the mercury in this U2. Now, what happens? When the pressure from the gas, because sometimes it is tight, you know, for to close the gas supply. Now, when it is opened, what happens? What happens is that the gas will enter in here Pushing this mercury in this YouTube or uh, in this arm from the arm of this part, pushing it and it starts rising up to the other level. And then what happened? They it will break this barrier, the limit it was, it keep on growing to this level, it going in this arm. Then what will happen? That is the job of the gas pressure here. This is the gas. You know, the gas is supplying, pushing this, going up. Then what happens to the atmosphere? Atmosphere is not going to work. Atmosphere is also going to apply its own pressure. And the atmosphere will be pushing this, going this way. So we now have a tug of war between the gas pressure pushing this, going up, and then atmospheric pressure trying to push. Then what happens? During a tug of war, one person must win. So it is either the gas wins. If the gas, the pressure from the gas wins, then we say that the gas has more pressure than the atmospheric pressure, you know? So let's assume this is the level that the, um, the gas is. And then, then the, the gas came in, push this, make, push the mercury here. And it pushes the mercury down above its own height. Look at the height, look at the same level. Remember when we talked about liquid pressure, we said that the pressure at the same level, they are equal. So the pressure at this point, A, is the same pressure at this point, B. So, but then what happened? Because the pressure from the gas is bigger than the pressure pushing in from the atmosphere, the two of them fighting, but then the gas has gone far because it pushes this into the, 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 the portion for the atmosphere. Therefore, a new height is made. That height is called the column of height due to the gas pressure. So the atmospheric, atmospheric pressure, even though it's also pushing, but then it couldn't win the gas pressure. In this case, that is why we have the first relation there on the board. That is the first one here. If you look at this one, you see what happened. You see H3 from this level all up there. Then we have this formula. The pressure of the gas is giving us this height plus the pressure from the atmosphere. I'm going to use ATM for the pressure from the atmosphere. So this is the formula you can use to find the pressure of the gas, given that you have this manometer. So this is the height, which is the height made by the column of gas pressure of this part and the atmospheric pressure added to it. Now, what, what happens a situation whereby the pressure from the atmosphere was able to push more than the pressure of the gas. So what I mean is, I'm still going to use the red marker to represent the mercury. So what happened when the pressure from the atmosphere What happened when the pressure from the atmosphere has pushed the mercury down, even though the gas pressure is pushing, but it couldn't. Then the one for the, the atmosphere push it up high on the arm of the gas. Then what happened? Let's say assuming this part is the, this part, part A, and then the same height, part B. So what is going to be the formula for finding the gas pressure? atmospheric pressure is going to be that the gas pressure at this point is going to be atmospheric pressure minus this height. Look at this height. So that is going to be the relation. That is why we have in the middle one, 
the manometer in the middle on the screen, you see atmospheric pressure minus H2. Why? Because the atmospheric pressure is now bigger than the, than the gas pressure. Now, imagine a situation comes, this is the case three. So we have the case one of this part, this particular manometer. This is the case two, which I've explained. Now we are going to case three. In case three, we are looking at a situation whereby the, the opening, there is no opening. There is no opening at this part. The manometer is closed. So when you close the manometer, what happens at that point? Let's see what happens. So at that point, uh, gas pressure is going to push, of course, push it to any height of it because there is no force battling it. So at that point, we, are done, we don't have any presence of the atmospheric pressure because it is closed against atmospheric pressure. So we, I'm going to call this place a vacuum. In that case, the gas pressure, the gas pressure at this place is going to be H density of the gas and probably the acceleration due to gravity. Or we're also going to say it is due to just the height made from this to this point, which is this place. So that is the um, explanation given to the manometer for measuring gas pressure. Now, using what we did earlier, we look at them here again. This is when it is closed, this is open, this is open, and so on and so forth. Now, let's look at this little calculation. What are we going to do to solve this problem? Look at this, calculate the gas pressure in this manometer when it is open. Remember that there is a standard atmospheric pressure, and that is the first case. The first case when the the gas pressure was able to push the mercury, the mercury inside this tube, up on this part. So I'm just going to say that the gas pressure is going to be atmospheric pressure plus the height it made there. So and since we are using centimeter, we are going to use centimeter throughout. So I'm going to use this atmospheric pressure to be 76 centimeter of mercury. Then we are going to say that the gas pressure is going to be 76 plus 13.7, that's 0 0.0. So that is going to be 7.9, 89.7 centimeter of mercury is the gas pressure at that point because this is open to the atmosphere and the value of atmospheric pressure at that point is given as 76 centimeter mercury or sometimes people use 760 millimeter mercury. A situation where the manometer is closed, when you close the manometer, we, we, we shut the atmospheric pressure out of the process. So we are going to say that the gas pressure is due to this height. The height is 26.4. Then remember that the height is, okay, remember this. The pressure is given as density of the gas acceleration due to gravity, and the height due to the, the gas pushed. In this case, uh, this question is just to paint the picture of what happens to gas pressure. So we didn't consider the, the nature of the gas. So whether it's hydrogen or whether it's helium, we didn't consider it. So what we are going to do now is simple. The gas pressure is due to this height, 26.4 centimeter mercury. Why am I using mercury? Because mercury is already there. A question can come, why not use water? Why not use red oil or paraffin? But mercury, based on the nature of mercury, its sensitivity and the level of conduct conductivity and its quickness in reactance to temperature change, coupled with some other physical factors, made us, made scientists to use mercury as um, a liquid for measuring pressure, even temperature, remember. All right. If you look at this, this was one of the 
the diagram we use in the introductory parts of this lesson. However, can we find the gas pressure here? The gas pressure here is going to be, remember, the level at this point and the level at this point are the same. However, and that level is 5 centimeters. So what happens? From here down to this place is 25 centimeters. Because 30 minus this 5 will be having 25 from here all the way to this place. So what is the gas pressure at that point? The height is 25 centimeters. So what is going to be the gas pressure? The gas pressure is going to be... I am not going to consider, okay, atmospheric pressure is acting on it, yes. So atmospheric pressure, I'm going to use 76. So I'm going to say 76, which is atmospheric pressure, plus, remember what I said, that is 30 minus 5, which is 25, plus 25. And this is 1, 300, 101 centimeter of mercury is the gas pressure in this diagram. Now, application of gas and atmospheric pressure. Remember, the study of atmospheric pressure and the study of gas pressure has led to the invention of different materials. And they are listed there on the screen. The chiffon, the strength, the bicycle pump, the lift pump, the force pump, and so many other things. But then look at this screen. You see what is happening. Why is it so? If you have gone to some local places, um, villages or some people selling things or liquid you see that even the people carrying tank people that supply water you have this and that is called chiffon remember look at the screen you see that this particular container is filling water to the other container on the floor without somebody pouring it in but just this tubing this rubber it's just a rubber and then it is helping the water to be transferred to the one on the bottom. This is as a result of the natural happening called atmospheric pressure. What happened is that, remember this tube is open. The pressure of the atmosphere is pushing this liquid inside due to the help of capillarity and all that. It now diffuse going into this tubing and it was able to be filling the the container on the floor and one of the let's look at this part now if you look at this there are a few conditions you must the condition is that the one you want to fill the liquid into must be on the on the on the ground and that the liquid must be raised up and remember that the pressure increases with depth so the pressure at this point and the pressure at this point are not the same so and the pressure at this level and the pressure at this level are the same because, uh, like we, we said earlier, the pressure at the same level must be the same throughout. So this is the chiffon, which is an application of gas pressure. Now look at this range. You go to hospital, they want to take blood, you want to take some other things. You use this range. What is happening? Now, let me even ask you, why do people use straw to drink water or take mineral? Why is it possible? Why is it that when you put the straw in the drink, in the mineral, the drink does not flow out of the straw until you start sucking it? When you do that, what you are doing is to take away the air that was blocking the straw in the first place. And when you take the air out, what happens? Then the pressure from the liquid will be able to rise up. And that is the same principle that is happening here. When the string was open, then the liquid the pressure could be pulled in to the container. And this is also one of the applications of atmospheric pressure. Now look at this bicycle pump. It is the help of the, make, uh, the atmospheric pressure that made them to be able to use this pump. Now let's talk about Hairs apparatus. This Hairs apparatus is an instrument used for measuring the relative density of different liquids. The relative density of different liquids. Now, let's see how it works. Now, if you look at this very well, you see that this is water and this could be any liquid. It could be mercury or whatever. Now, when this place, this particular place now is closed, is the air is removed. Remember, there is air inside this tube. There is air inside it. 
So when you remove the air using this means of maybe a vacuum pump, what happens? The water will now rise up the tube and it goes up higher. And this one will also go up higher. So then um, when you look at it, you now have that the density in the first one, let's use this one as water, and the density in this second one is equal to the height of the water all over the height of the liquid. So let's look at uh, an example to be able to apply this principle to a problem solving. Now, look at this. It says, in an experiment to determine the density of a, of a liquid using Hess apparatus, the height of water column is 12 centimeters, and that of um, liquid is 16. Now, remember the formula we used. We said that the density of one, one substance is equal to the density of the second. And that is inverse, the height of the second all over the height of one. You just interchange them. You can memorize that. So let's use water as head density of the first one. And then we say that um, the height of water column is 12. So I'm going to use this one. OK, I can also use W for, for, for water. Mm -hmm. So um, the height of water column is 12. So I'm going to say. This is 12, that is the height for the water column. And that of the liquid is 16, so this is 16. If the density of water is 1, so the density of water is 1 all over. So calculate the density of the liquid. So the density of this one, so L, that is low, I can use this one to represent it. So what do we do? We now say that if you clear this fraction, you have that 12 all over 16, which is 3 over 4. If it is density, then it's going to be gram per cm cube. This is the density of this liquid according to this question. With the help of this apparatus or this apparatus, which is called the hair apparatus, look at this tubing where the air is removed out, then the liquid may rise on this tube as shown on this diagram. We have come to the end of this lesson, but before we go, we are going to take some more questions from exam guide app. So let's take a few questions on exam guide app. All right, um, this is a very perfect question. The diagram above illustrates a simple barometer, which distance measures the atmospheric pressure. Remember when we explained the simple barometer, we say that the atmospheric pressure is pushing on this container, and this is a capillary tube, then between the surface of the liquid to this place Q is the height, which is given as 76 cm of mercury, or 760 millimeter mercury. And we say that PQ is the vacuum, which is called Teresoli vacuum. However, the answer to this question is QR or ROQ. So where is it? QR, that is B. B is the right option. Okay, now it takes a shorter time for a liquid to boil at the top of a mountain than at the base of the mountain. Remember, when we talked about um, pressure, we said that pressure decreases with altitude. So if you are going up higher, the pressure is reducing. So in that case, we are going to say that um, pressure is lower, and that is B. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the ZAM Guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel hit the notification bell and share the video to people that would benefit from it. Bye.